Hello, my name is Anthony from SonicGoodness.com. I'm here with a reason tutorial on how to make an effects box that I used in a song. Somebody had uh, actually commented and asked me how I did it. And as I wrote the guy a reply, I realized that I was getting awfully geeky awfully quickly and I didn't actually expect anybody to understand it. So with that, I was like, wow, maybe this is an opportunity for me to do one of these nifty little video tutorials. So, if you will, just pardon me through this very first try at this, with lots of ums and pauses and awkward silences, I'm sure. Anyway, let's get on with it. The effect that we're going to be making is on this here guitar track, right? Huh? And it sounds like... So it's this rhythmic uh, band passy kind of thing going on. Anyway, and in the mix it sounds like... It's got a little bit of a dynamic feel to it. It, it, it feels uh, nice, in my opinion. And uh, he thought well enough of it to actually ask about it, so here we go. Over on uh, this one, I've got the very same guitar track without any effects on it whatsoever. Let's mute him for right now. We don't need any drums, thank you. And as you can tell, it's quite a plain little guitar line. And that speaks... Um, pretty much to my inability to play the guitar. But fortunately, we have reason. And with reason, we can make things sound great, even if we don't know what we're doing. So, in um, that whole uh, frame of mind, let's uh, tweak this guitar track. Here I've got the mix channel. Now, as a kid growing up, I was taught that distortion was the most important thing in the world. I was a uh, rock and roller who never really rocked and rolled, not in any uh, official capacity at least. So um, I was always taught you have a guitar, you take the guitar, you run it through an effects box, and then the effects box to the amp or through an effects loop in the amp. So with that, that's what I've done with most all of my guitars and most all of my songs ever since. And Reason uh, does that fairly well. We have the Scream 4 distortion, right? And for this patch, I dialed it to the uh, tube preset with the damage control uh, right around 40 something. And I did alter these knobs. I'm sure there was a reason behind it. So we're going to do the same thing here. Push this one up to about 100 and something, and then dial this one back to 16. This was the contour and bias on the tube. Now I'm sure that these things actually do something and it's probably all scientific and stuff. I don't know what it is, but this is what it sounds like. And I like it. It's just a nice little dirty buzz on it. So the next trick was of course to add the guitar amp. And of course these days I don't mic guitar amps. I don't know that I've ever mic'd guitar amps, I was just too lazy to do it. So it was always in the box effects for me, and with this little Line 6 guitar amp, it's kind of easy to dial up to something that sounds alright. So I added a guitar uh, amp, and I dialed it to this uh, Brit Drive preset. And I can already tell you, I'm going to pull the drive back just a hair. And that puts us right here. But the problem with this sound is that the guitar line is so basic and so plain that yeah, having this distortion, yeah, it brings it out, but um, it kind of shows off my inability to play. So to remedy this, there was a video out on YouTube by the uh, Line 6 expert guy, Matt Piper, and he showed you how to run a uh, sound through the Maelstrom to get the uh, Maelstrom's filter effects to uh, be on your guitar or whatever. So this 
premise is pretty much the same deal. We'll create a maelstrom by shift clicking and flip the rack around. And instead of the uh, line six going to the mixer output, we'll put it into the shaper filter A of the maelstrom and then take the main output of the maelstrom and run it into the mixer. And automatically we'll get some filter effect, I'm pretty sure. We'll turn filter B off and actually mod B can come off too. And we get... Got a little bit of a muffly thing going on there. Dial up the frequency just a hair. Oh wait, yeah, that's the other part about this. It's gotta be on band pass, you dummy. Okay, yeah, so I was wondering why that was sounding so muffled. Low pass filters will do that to you. Anyway, so yeah, the next the next part of the trick here is to use this mod A. We don't need oscillator A, but uh use mod A, tempo sync it, and run the mod output on the back mod A out into the uh, filter modulation input and we'll push this here knob up some let's say you know whatever 90 95 just enough to get some activity on this here knob and that'll sound like hey yeah our friend the sine wave But that doesn't sound like a guitar anymore. I wanted to uh, retain the guitar effect. So what I'll do is change this LFO to the unipolar uh, square wave. And now we have kind of an on-off thing, right? But the fun part about it is in modulating this uh, rate knob. So we'll edit the uh, right click and edit the uh, automation on it. Come over here and set us up a, uh, let's just go ahead and set us up a good size loop here. And have some fun with the modulation. Right, yeah, so now we've got some movement. Yes. Now I guess you're probably saying, hey, well that doesn't sound like much of anything at all. Well, it's not really supposed to. But the fun part is when you bring in some um, drums. Instant groove. Oh yeah, yeah, see, it's just spacey enough to add some character to the uh, guitar line or um, the guitarist's inability to play a guitar line. That sounds like it needs to be adjusted just a hair out. So there you go. Here's a uh, rhythmic bandpass filter for your guitar. What's happening is this here square wave is modulating this here frequency knob based off the rate that we dialed in on this here clip. And you know, you can have a lot of fun with it. Just drag this joker back out, go ahead and set up your 16 bars, right click it, uh, right click and no, can't do that. Here I was trying to be all polished and suave and stuff, but I'm actually going to have to do this manually. Alright, so let's just get a little more action going on here. You know... That, uh, that that speedy little change there, that's that's really where the fun part is. Let's 
try that again. Okay, so yeah, I'm getting crazy here. It's fun to play with anyway. So anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with that. And I hope that you enjoyed this short little video tutorial on how to build a bandpass filter that uh, modulates a rate. Um, ah, you know what it is already. Anyway, have fun. Make some music.